today I'm going to talk to you about a little product called Antifusant, which is a way to turn your silk into paper, basically. It makes the silk react to dye as if it was a piece of paper. The dye will not spread, it will not bleed. You might get just a little bit of fuzz around the edge of your paint, your, your dye depending upon how wet your brush is and how much dye you put down. So this label says no flow antifusing it is used to inhibit the spreading of dyes on fabric. And that is true. It will do that for you. It will inhibit the flow of dyes, but it also says um, that this is great to use for signatures and logos and when you're using uh, felt tip markers and I have found that to actually not be true. So if you're a silk painter and you think that you're going to use this product, it's wonderful, but the result I have had with markers is that after my pieces steam set, it will turn gray. It's not black anymore, so it's not a completely it's almost as if because the antifusant is on the silk, not all of the pigment can get down inside the fibers. This is what it looks like. I bought this on the Dharma Trading Company website. It wasn't super expensive. Nothing that I buy is exorbitantly expensive. And it comes in different sizes. You don't have to get a great big thing like this. I got a great big thing like this because I've used it to do a lot of my banner work because I'm doing large scale pieces and a lot of times I'm doing things that have words like scripture on them. I also used this product on my sign that you see hanging behind me. All of that lettering, um, the individual little logos, those social icons and that Indiana Artisan logo. I put Antifusa on the silk first, and that allowed me with a fine liner brush to get a very crisp, detailed edge. But the other reason I like using this so much is that you can get more of a, almost like a watercolor effect without having outlines in your work. And sometimes I don't want outlines. Sometimes I just wanna be free to paint, and I want my painting to look very free, but you're fighting back and forth with where do I put a gutta outline or where do I use my wax or how do I keep that dye from just spreading all over the surface and ruining places where you might want an edge. So in order to watercolor using the no flow, and I'm just saying watercolor as a as just the flavor of what your work can look like when you use this a certain way. You want to get um, a lot of dye onto the silk in order to use this, or you want to, after the antifusa is completely dry on the surface, and I prepared this ahead of time, you want to put some water on the area where you're going to work before you go in with some dye, and that will help things get kind of liquid. So I'm just gonna jump right in and my plan today um, was to go in here and just to create some large flowers because I want to, I just want to have a really floral, colorful piece hanging on the wall. And when this is all finished and steamed up, all the antifusant will rinse out of it to return the hand of the silk. And then I will stretch this piece of silk over a canvas and it becomes a 2D work of art. And I'm just gonna go in with some large brush strokes. And I'm allowing my brush to just kind of drag across. And this is what the antifusant does. You see that some of the white is left behind. And I'm just being careful about how hard I press, how much liquid I shove down onto the surface. And I'm gonna allow that white space because I'm gonna come in with another color just to play with it a little bit. And this is something that I think just takes some practice in terms of how much dye you put in your brush, what size of brush you use. I'm using a fairly large, cheap brush here, um, but the reason why I'm getting some of this white left behind is because the antifusant will interact, I have found, it will interact with your brush 
so that just like on paper, your brush will start to drag across the silk without all of the pigment being left behind. You'll wanna rinse your brush often um, because you can, as you're working with the dye on the silk, you can pick up some of the antifusant and your brush will start to get just a little bit gummy. It's not, it's not terribly bad, it's nothing to be afraid of, but you'll get a little better result if you just keep your brush nice and wet as you're going back and forth into the dye color. These are not realistic flowers. These are just meant to be really fun, modern floral kind of shapes. I like organic shapes. I like how, how free they are to paint. I'm not trying to make this look like a particular kind of flower. I'm just sort of keeping some rhythm and movement going on. And I'm, I'm kind of being mindful about where my center is going to be because I am going to add a center element to each of the floral pieces that I do. So I've decided that with this color, I'm just gonna do a five petal piece. Other flowers, I'll give eight. Other flowers, I'll give six. I, I can tell you that if you wanna do something that has a more modern flavor like this, you'll see your work start to take on a little bit more pleasing shape if you have a better understanding of what actual flowers look like, how they grow, how they're structured. Even though, like I said before, that I'm not trying to represent any specific particular flower as I'm, as I'm working on this. But I haven't drawn anything on here I'm just for fun making organic shapes with pleasing colors because I want something really colorful for the wall um, and I'm not trying to get super specific with it. So I'm not trying to, to look at a photograph and copy what I see or anything like that. I'm gonna go in on top of this now and show you how these interact, how these dyes interact. Um, and I'm coming back in now with just sort of a, a golden, orange, butter, yellow as a highlight. And I've still got some of that orange in my brush. But you can see this is a different color. And now as I get out into here, you can see a little better. And I'm just going right on top of what I painted before. And like so much of what I do, this is really just a whim. Um, I know I tell you that a lot, but I, I find that it's very important for me artistically to have pieces that I do just because they make me happy and not because I'm trying to make it look like something specific because it, um, when I'm doing pieces for me, I'm usually, I'm trying to create something fun with color. I'm a very lazy artist. That's the truth. So <laughs> I, I will tend to do a lot of things that are kind of cheating, like making a beautiful thing that doesn't exactly exist in nature just because I feel like that's what I wanna do. So a lot of times I'm not trying to come in here and be incredibly tedious about um, honing my drawing skills. I do that in other ways by keeping a sketchbook and, and doing actual drawing um, or working on commission projects where all of the design work is done ahead of time in paper and in small samples before you ever go at the silk. So when I'm doing things for me, I just, I just do whatever I want. And this is kind of what I wanted to do today. Some big, beautiful shapes, some big pieces of color. And like I said, I'm just dragging my brush across that anti-fusant surface. And I don't know how much of this you can see, um, that there's some brush stroke happening in here that you just can't get on silk. If, if you haven't treated the surface in some way. I have tried brushing it on a stamp, 
to see if I could stamp in with it as a resist and get it to block out a stamp shape. That didn't work so well. Um, it was just really messy. Um, I didn't get a good clean line on it. I've not bothered to put the, the no flow in a resist bottle primarily because I'm already using gutta. Primarily I'm using it as you see it here. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much exclusively using antifusant to prepare large sections uh, for painting or small little elements. Like if I'm trying to put a logo on a piece or trying to do a strip of lettering on a piece it really does create a surface on the silk that makes the silk to me feel very much against my brush as if I'm painting on watercolor paper. And, and so even the feel of the brush going across the silk is very similar to a brush on watercolor paper if you've ever watercolored before. You can see that my brush stroke is still delineated. So overlapping areas, for example, places where even though I've used the same color, I've gone in on top and layered on as I've worked my way around the floral element, the color darkens the more passes you put on. And, and that is not the case when you're working with something like gutta. If, if you have an area that's encapsulated by gutta, and you draw around it and then fill in with the dye, as you all, all the silk painters know, the, the dye is just going to be one color. You, you will not be able to delineate brush strokes. So using a product like this is just gonna open up another avenue for you. It's going to give you another tool in your toolbox, so to speak, and it's something new to play with. Folks, there is always a reason to have hope.